So now to begin with, we're going to take another look at the 555 timer wired in monostable mode. So it's a, a pretty cool uh, circuit there. You give a press of the button. The output stays high for a time determined by that capacitor and uh, that resistor. And uh, then it goes back low. And it works pretty nice, but there is one problem. If the output is uh, only high for a brief period of time, but it's uh, quicker than what you release the switch, as you can see here, the output just stays high. So we're going to modify this. I'm going to turn the uh, power off because uh, I might short circuit something by uh, yanking that jumper out. But we're going to take that jumper out and replace it with a capacitor. So the capacitor is going to uh, quickly charge. Let's put it this way. And the Z value doesn't matter. I could probably go a lot lower. I got to go to pin two. There we go. And I don't think there's a limit to how low you can go. There may be, I don't know. So in any case, capacitor going to pin two. And then we got this uh, resistor here, parallel to that one, so that the capacitor can discharge when we release the switch. So now, I'm, oh yeah, I gotta turn the power back on. Now, we got the uh, same circuit. Press the button, you can see output stays high for the same amount of time. But if I hold the button, now it goes back to low. So we uh, charge the capacitor a lot faster than what the output time is. That's the uh, main thing. And then once it's charged, then we get a high voltage at pin two again, even if I hold the button. So now we'll look at the schematic. All of this is, uh, this is a demonstration purposes, but uh, this part is the monostable mode of the 555 timer, the way we wired it up. A uh, low, uh, quick pulse to pin number two, doesn't matter how long it is, as long as it's shorter than the timing right here. Results in the capacitor starting to charge through that 10K resistor. At the same time, the output goes high. Once it gets to two thirds of the supply voltage, pin six senses that, then pin seven connects to ground, as does the output. The output goes low and uh, the capacitor instantly discharges since we uh, don't have any resistance. And uh, so you don't wanna use way too high of a value uh, capacitor there. 100 uh, microfarad might be about as high as you want to go. So, in any case, low pulse results in the output going high. Now, if we hold the switch too long, as we saw though, uh, pin number two, if it keeps seeing that low input right there, overpowers pin number six. So if pin number two is held low, then pin number uh, six will never tell seven to uh, discharge and go to ground. So we have to get it back to low before that timing gets up to two thirds of the supply voltage. So the capacitor does that. So we press the switch and so that's a positive there, it's holding. It's a pull up resistor. That's the main purpose of this resistor. Keeping pin two at five volts until we close the switch. And with the capacitor, now we got that connection. It's gonna suck the, what the current comes through the resistor that way really quickly. And thus pin two is gonna see uh, probably zero volts real quickly, less than one third of the supply voltage though. But then the capacitor is gonna charge. This is gonna charge up to five volts on that side, zero volts on that side, and then now pin two will see five volts. Capacitor is completely charged. So it's high now, even if we're pressing the switch, and a pin six can set the output back low, no problem. Now we have that charged capacitor not going anywhere. While the switch is closed, we release the switch. So that's the only use of this resistor right here. It's also going to the positive supply, which is five volts. So now we have a path, this is more positive. So we're gonna go conventional current for the capacitor to discharge right there and get ready for our next press. So now I'm using a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. Uh, that's the same as 470 nanofarad. Um, so I grabbed I actually had one on the board, but uh, the capacitor you're gonna see is a one nanofarad. I swapped them out, but you're gonna see it works exactly the same. So again, we have the same timing. That capacitor doesn't affect the timing at all. So uh, that capacitor and that resistor, as we saw before, but I can hold the uh, button down and now it will switch back. But this, uh, we can do the timing about 470 times faster than we were able to do with that one. So I don't know what limits we got with the uh, two of them, but uh, the lower value capacitor, I don't think you can go too low, maybe at some point, but uh, this is pretty low, so we're doing pretty good. In any case, uh, that's it, I hope you enjoyed.